Right, so let's talk more about creating and extending abstract classes looking at out of ordinary uh, type scenarios. In the last video, I talked about some of the rules regarding abstract classes. I said that an abstract class cannot be declared final, but I didn't say you cannot have final methods on your abstract class. So I'm going to look at some examples to clarify this. So we're going to uh, create a new class in our inheritance project. I'm going to call this class abstract class example. Right, so there's the uh, class. So code here consists of an abstract class, as you can see, called abstract example. And it's got a static final field there, a constant in other words. It's got a static final method. Moving on down, it's got a final method, and it's also got two abstract method definitions at the bottom of the screen. So scrolling down a bit more, we've also got uh, the class concrete example, and that extends the abstract example and simply implements the two abstract methods. You can see that uh, on screen. And finally, we've got our abstract class example, just a public class with a main method. We're actually calling both methods. All right, so let's run this now. And you can see the output on the screen. So this is an example of the abstract class controlling what matters to it in a final method and allowing extensibility at the same time by calling abstract methods within the final method. So let's now just tinker with constructors in an abstract class. So we're going to create another class here. We'll call this one abstract class example two. Okay, so there's our class. So this abstract class that I've called conceptual class has a no arguments constructor that's protected there as you can see. It's also got an abstract method. And scrolling on down a bit further, we've got the second class in this file rule class that implements the abstract method, but it doesn't have a constructor. And scrolling down our last class, so it creates an instance of real class and then executes the method. So let's run the code. You can see the output hello world showing on screen. So you might be asking at this point, well, what's out of the ordinary with this code? Nothing, right? It's just a convoluted way to print hello world. Well, not really, let's just change one word here. So we're gonna change the constructor on the abstract class to be private. At the moment you can see it's protected. Change that to private. So what's really the big deal doing that? The abstract class will never be instantiated anyway, right? Except now by doing that our class doesn't compile and you can see the error down the bottom of the screen there. There's no default constructor available in conceptual class. The compiler wants us to create a default constructor on the real class, all right? So that's all right. So let's do that. So I'm going to add the constructor to real class except you can see clearly that hasn't worked. There's no default constructor available in conceptual class. All right, so let's just add a parameter to try and get around this issue. So I'm gonna change the constructor to have one parameter, string S1. Still got a compiler error, as you can see there. So we cannot create any constructor in the concrete class while the abstract class only has a private one. All right, so let's go back to our abstract class and add another constructor. I'll paste that in. Right, you can see now we've added a private conceptual class constructor with one argument. So go back to our real class and let's uh, add a super call into the constructor. So super S1. So clearly we've still got an error there. A private access. So let's actually change this now. So it's got protected access. That's where you had the original constructor at. And we've now got the code uh, almost to compile. We just need to make a change down here and pass a new argument to our constructor with one parameter, so hello world. If we run it, we can now see we've got hello world printing out twice. All right, so what actually happened here? Well, the abstract class, going back up to that, that declared basically that there was one and only one way to instantiate an object, and that you had to pass it at a minimum one string parameter, and that the method it defined, but which your subclass implements will be executed when any object is created. All right, so let's really confirm that that is the case. So I'm gonna go back and add another constructor to our concrete class, to our real class. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see we've got uh, two arguments there now for our real class. So we've got two parameters defined for our constructor now. So as you can see, we've got a compiler error here. You must call the super method and pass it a string. Your options here are to pass it one or the other of the string parameters, but you cannot get out of calling the abstract methods one parameter constructor. 
This behavior is not limited to an abstract class, by the way, but it's interesting here because the abstract class can force the call of a non-implemented method in the instantiation of an object that is forced to implement the method. All right, so I'm just gonna undo that change, remove that constructor, and our code's still valid at this point in time. All right, so I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna present you with a quiz next, and then I'll see you in the next video after that, where we're gonna start looking at polymorphism. Now we've seen a bit of it here, but we're gonna talk about what it is and how overriding methods is a key to its functionality. See you in the video soon.